Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fully Booked, the Hidden Gems author podcast, in which Craig Touch and myself, Roland Hume, chat some of the interesting figures and leading lights of this crazy industry we're in of writing and self-publishing. Once again, we're branching a little further out from just self-publishing today to talk about ghostwriting. And before I introduce our next guest, I just want to say a quick joke that I heard about ghostwriting the other day. Man is on a date with a girl and the girl says to him, what do you do? For no, the, the guy says to the girl, what do you do for a living? And she says, I'm a ghostwriter. And he goes, Oh my God, when did you die? Oh I didn't even get a single laugh out of that. <laughs> but here is our guest who is very much alive. Uh, Rhiannon DeVerk, ghostwriter, author, chief editor of London Runway Magazine. We are delighted to have you here. Thank you for not hanging up as soon as you heard that joke. How are you doing today? <laughs> yeah, I was doing a lot better before I heard that, but no, I'm doing great, thank you. <laughs> How are you? Well, I'm very well, and we are delighted to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we wouldn't be here without the man himself, Craig Touch, the owner and founder of Hidden Gems and an author himself. How are you doing today, Craig? Doing really well. Thanks, Roland, and thanks, Rihanna, for joining us. Um, yeah, we, you know, like we haven't, I know we mentioned ghostwriting uh, on one or two episodes in the past, but we've never really devoted a full episode to it. And, you know, there's a, there's a couple different um, ways that, this affects authors, right? They can either um, hire a ghostwriter, maybe, you know, some some people uh, aren't necessarily writers themselves, but they do want to publish a book, so they hire a ghostwriter often in nonfiction, you know, uh, people that do sort of speaking engagements, they want to have a book and they don't necessarily want to write it. Sometimes famous people, you know, want to write a biography, but they don't want to do, do it themselves. But also um, as a writer, you might uh, want to, uh, be a ghostwriter, right? So we want to talk about it from that perspective and, you know, what the opportunities are and, you know, what sort of you have to uh, yeah, learn, what you have to know. Um, and uh, you also have a process that you've developed over the years that have helped you write your, your books even faster. So we can even talk about that. So let's get started with um, maybe tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into ghostwriting. Mm, yeah, so I got into ghostwriting kind of under protest, really. So I have been the kind of person that tells stories and, and writes stories down pretty much since I learned what a story was. So everyone assumed that, you know, when it come came time to go to uni, I was going to go and maybe go to Oxford or something like that and study literature. So I decided I would go and study photography um, <laughs> just to rebel a little bit. Yeah. And, um, I finished uni on the Friday, graduated. And on the Monday, I started my first job as a copywriter. So that rebellion went exactly to plan <laughs> um but no i i started out pretty quickly from um i used to write a blog just for fun got headhunted from that into my first job as a copywriter and pretty quickly from there thought hang on maybe i could do this for more people and make even more money so i started getting freelance clients and then one of them asked me to write a book and i was like hey i reckon i could do that so i did <laughs> just like that that's and, then, and what was the book about? How did they, yeah. they said you could write a book and they gave you the idea for the book and you wrote it for them? Yes, yeah, it was a romance. It was a fiction novel. Um, ah. It was actually a novel, actually, so it was a shorter one. Um, nice thing to wet my feet with. But um, yeah, and then we wrote, I think, three in that series. Um, and that was the start of everything. That's interesting. So you're writing fiction that I assume they then publish under their own name? Yes, yeah, I do a mixture of fiction and non-fiction. Um, so usually with fiction it will be a publisher will come to me and say look we have this idea for this series um obviously we don't have anyone in mind to write it but you know can you ghost write it for us and then you know it could be sort of up to 10 or 12 or even 15 books in a series um and yes put out under some other best-selling author's name uh <laughs> with no idea of my involvement at all which i don't mind no, but they, I mean, the, these are little babies that you make and then you release them and it's not like you were ever attached to them. Yeah, they are, they are gone forever yeah, now. Exactly. I can still visit them. I can check in <laughs> on them on Amazon and see how they're doing. <laughs> so uh, so that first one was another author though, right? And so they were just uh, already writing, but they, you know, wanted you to... Yeah, I, I, don't say, I don't know what their situation was, whether they had other authors that they were contracting as ghostwriters or whether they'd written some stuff themselves, but they had a formula that they obviously knew worked, um, you know, the tropes to hit and, and what the storyline right. should be. Um, so it's kind of paint by numbers almost kind of writing. Um, 
and it went great. Is that how, well, is that how it's, like it always goes or like how much sort of latitude do people give you, I guess, or, or it varies? Oh yeah, it varies massively. So I go from, uh, so one of my long running publishing clients, he basically gives me a character breakdown, a full plot, um, everything, absolutely everything I need. And I just have to fill in the blanks. And then I have clients on the other side who say, I kind of want to write a book, but I don't know what about. And then it's my job to sit down with them and go, okay, how, you know, if it's a nonfiction book, for example, how is it going to benefit your business? What are your business goals? Okay, maybe we can do something on this topic and then actually really go down and, and figure out everything from the chapters to actually writing it. That's um, that's really interesting. I and mean, it, <laughs> it's, um, how, I mean, how, how do you, you've done this, how many years have you been doing this now? 12 years now. Yeah. 12 years, wow. Mm -hmm. And so how many <laughs> books have you written? So uh, I'm very excited actually. So in December, my 100th published book is coming out. Wow. <laughs> which is, and that's I mean, awesome. I've written probably, probably another 10 on top of that that never saw the light of day, um, mostly yeah. in my own back catalogue. But um, yeah, so pretty big milestone. So, okay, so you have 100 books, but they're all published under other people's names. So you can't necessarily use those to um, promote your services. You can say, I'm yes. sure, hey, I've written a hundred books, but it's hard to prove that, right? Because I'm sure you yeah. have an agreement where it says, I can't tell people that I've written your book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the biggest um, problem, I would say, that ghostwriters face, is that we are ghosts. So once the book is done, we can't necessarily have any involvement. Sometimes clients are very nice and they say, you know what, you did a lot of the work and I want to acknowledge that. Um, whether it would, they might just credit me as a collaborator, uh, they might use some kind of sleight of hand a little bit and say, oh, this is my editor or something like that, you know, and some of them will, you know, will come out and say that I, I ghostwrote it for them. And some will just leave me a nice testimonial, which at least I can use. Oh, okay. and so I, you have a website, right? Where I you do. get all the, where that's where people would find you to get exactly, you to write. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I suppose, I suppose, I mean, they did provide a lot of they provided the raw materials Absolutely. and you just assembled it so i think yeah. it's it's right that they feel a sense of ownership to it as well well in some Absolutely. cases right but in other cases they're letting her <laughs> sort of decide everything but either way it doesn't matter yeah. because they are hiring you <laughs> you for a service and part of that service is that you're providing them with the book whether you came up with it 100 mm -hmm. or or whatever it is it doesn't matter the part of the job is you can't disclose um that you wrote it or in yeah. some cases at least right i mean that's that's kind of the point i think for a lot of people because especially for those nonfiction people that are doing those you know speaking engagements and they use that book as a as a way to, to pull people in you don't want to be like well i didn't write the book it's like well why don't you have your ghostwriter speak then <laughs> <laughs> but it is something that's ubiquitous in the industry. So I believe James Patterson uses a ghost writer. I think that Lee Child did, where you'd like you'd farm it out, uh, say, this is what I want to happen. And then they bring it back and write it. And he put his own touches on it. But it's like, that's how he manages to churn out so many books. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, obviously I can't say the name, but I am or have been in the past. Um, there's one in the romance section and one in the mystery thriller section. Um, two very big authors on Amazon that put out a lot of books and are very, very popular. Um, and I have been one of their writers because the output that is required, you can't have one person do it. You know, it has to be a team of people behind the scenes working together. So yeah. Yeah, I am part of that group. <laughs> well, yeah, and you must be good at it. Well, I mean, I think so. Otherwise, I wouldn't get so much work, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. And, you know, you're writing for big name authors and they have a, you know, they can't just hire a, a, a ghostwriter that isn't good. Otherwise, it's going to sully their name and make, right. you know, tarnish their reputation, right? So you have to make sure that you're your writer. So I'm curious, though, like if you're writing for somebody who has this big catalog like that, uh, you probably want to write in their style. So do you end up having to read a bunch of their books or do they sort of do a pass on it after you deliver it to them and sort of tweak it up to be more like their own book or what? Yeah, I mean, again, um, every client is a little bit different, but generally speaking, yeah, I will get the client's voice. And if that's someone that's already written fiction, then I can read what they've done. Or if it's someone that I'm working with in nonfiction, I can you know, listen to speeches or presentations that they've made see what they write on social media and just listen to them in a call like this, just talk to them and pick up how they talk, how they express themselves. 
and then find a way to translate that to the page. Now, you must yeah. be a it's funny sometimes we talk to, to authors about plotters versus pantsters but there mm -hmm. is no the most definitely uh, inherent in what you do is the whole plotting thing oh yes uh, i i think it's the most important part of the process if you yeah. don't have a good structure whether it's fiction or non-fiction if you don't have a good structure in place um it, it i think it probably quadruples or even more the time it takes to write on the, the, the whole book and you have to especially for me when i'm working with a client they need to know where we're going so that they can yeah. have confidence in the project so that they understand what i need from them in terms of materials and information um you know it just doesn't work without a structure and so i was a ghostwriter for a company called scribe for a little while and i didn't have a great mm -hmm. experience with them but this what they did is they did equip their writers with this is how you write a non-fiction book and right. i was like wow it, this whatever my bad experience at this company were it's worth seeing this because it is literally like a roadmap of how to do it and then it's the human relation skills and the the writing skills which are clearly what you demonstrate in abundance <laughs> yeah for sure so then if uh if a client contacts you then is the so you i guess you charge based on the job but uh mm -hmm. there must be some sort of criteria that you're using like is it you know word based or is it um you know different genres maybe you charge differently or or hey he's a really big name i can charge him a lot more like how, how does that work so okay this is this is where i get to be an excited nerd for a moment um so i have <laughs> developed a spreadsheet with an algorithm which tells me how to charge because it was taking so long and also i have dyscalculia so i'm useless with numbers so what i needed was something that would do it for me so i have a basic rate based on the amount of words um and it doesn't change by genre to answer that part um and then i kind of go through and i put on everything that a client could possibly want so is it a rush job for example uh, do they want to change my normal terms and conditions to something a bit more complex in which case i'm going to charge more um are they willing to give me a credit in which case i might charge a little bit less um all kinds of factors that might go in all the bells and whistles i can possibly add do they want me to go and get a cover editor uh, sorry a cover designer and a, and a layout person to do so we actually have a finished book at the end that they can just publish themselves do they want right. that in the package you know all the little bits and pieces that i can add on there's there's a grid and i just go along the grid and i go okay they want that 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 and it's going to be this many words and okay that's the price <laughs> so but um is that transparent to them do they know yeah. that ahead of time so you're just they just i mean on your website it basically give them maybe it doesn't give any kind of idea or is it just contact yeah. me and i'll tell you okay yeah i give them a ballpark range i think it's really important okay. actually um because as a ghostwriter you get so many inquiries from people who are basically just tire kickers so having the prices on there up front and saying like this is the minimum you're going to pay puts a lot of people off and I like that the fewer calls I'm getting the better that's working because I don't want to talk to people who can't afford me in the first place now do you do you feel comfortable telling us what that amount might be because I think that they, there are people here who might be listening to this thinking I want to be a ghostwriter but there might be people thinking I want to hire a ghostwriter so how much for writing a fictional book for example might it be mm -hmm. yeah so my minimum um and this would be more for a novella would be twenty thousand dollars um very likely for a fiction novel you're going to be looking at sixty thousand plus um and that again is just if it's a standard right so again it can be a lot higher we can go up to a hundred thousand if it's a like a sci-fi epic that's going to be a very long book um and even above that if they want if they want it quicker if they want it um you know whatever whatever the bells and whistles they want extra on it that, I mean, that's great. That's and you know, that's for an author that's listening to this, thinking about you know getting into ghostwriting. Those numbers are higher than what a lot of self publisher, self published authors are making on their own books. And so, if you're a good writer who isn't, I don't know, you know, you don't have the name, you're not great at marketing, you've never had a lot of success with your own stuff this might be, you know, a way to, to supplement your income or, you know, <laughs> give you an even bigger income than what you might have expected mm -hmm. to get from your own writing. So that's- Craig uh, and I do consult calls with a lot of other authors who, you know, wanted yeah. to up their profile. And I think, we, Craig, you probably agree with this, that most of the time their writing is not the problem. 
they're, yeah, they're, they're I mean, writers. It's the concept of book, the execution of the book, the, the how it's packaged and things like that. Yeah, and I mean, like, listen, I don't read the books beforehand either, right? I don't have time. Generally, they, you know, somebody wants to do a consult and you know we'll set it up right away. But it's it's generally not about the writing because that's that's a whole different thing, right? I mean, to go through a book, I, they they they're better off hiring a developmental editor to get sort of that information, right? We're usually talking more about the sales, but yeah, like uh, often it is exactly it. I had one uh, just the other day where, you know, the the person has really good reviews, but um, you know, they're just their their marketing is not good, and you know, it's like looking at their blurb and their you know their cover, the categories they're in, the keywords. That's usually more of the issue. So. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this is this is really interesting. Like, I think that those are, I mean, those are great numbers for that. But how many um, jobs are you able to do in a year? I usually like to take on two or three at a time. Um, this year, I wrote twelve books, um, but wow. that does include five under my own name. So good for you. And you're still yeah. writing under your own name as well. I mean, that's amazing. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I yeah. don't know. I must be insane. I just love writing so much. I can't stop. <laughs> it's working for you <laughs> and working for other people <laughs> so that's right. cool. um okay so and uh, listen 12 books in a year that mm -hmm. is a really good pace and that i know from experience back when i was writing romance i was trying you know i was at the beginning i was doing a book a month but that pace for me was not sustainable <laughs> over the time mm -hmm. i mean part of it is you know coming up with the ideas but it's like how many different ways can i write a love scene you know how many different bad boy tropes my you know and i i just I, I started to burn myself out from it um so i can imagine you know you're doing this for other people you have to maintain this level of quality and and for in different genres and non-fiction and fiction um you know how do you keep that kind of pace up I want to tell you a story about a huge mistake I made 12 years ago. Great. <laughs> so when you go. just All got right. started. Yeah, <laughs> when I just got started. So that job that I told you about that I took on the Monday after graduating, um, I came in. And by the way, they were paying me absolute peanuts. I was actually, so accommodation was included in my wage, right? Which was oh, great because wow. I just graduated, right? So I needed a place to live. But obviously, kind of a red flag. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So I get in on the Monday and they said to me, um, here's your assignment for today. You know, I don't remember the exact number of words that it was. I remember what it was when I left. I don't remember exactly what it was on the first day, but it was something like 12,000 words. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, this is the real world of adult work. We've got to, got to try and get this done. Okay. So Can I you tell us how many I'm... words that would be? 12,000 words. 12,000 words. He said that. Yeah. That's that for in a day. <laughs> in a day bloody hell wow and That's, i did it. i mean I, i've done that but it damn near killed me and that was they won't be good and they won't be they won't be Honestly, good words <laughs> at the end of the day my hands were aching so much and i was exhausted i was like i did it and they were like oh fantastic can you do that again tomorrow so <laughs> that was a really big mistake to make i should have done you know a lot less and then they would have said okay you can do eight thousand a day or something um and gradually over time so at first I was leading a team of Filipino writers and I was also editing their work on top of the 12,000. And eventually the guy kind of said, you know what, we'll save money if we fire them and you just write their articles because you write Bloody quicker hell. than they do. So then I was doing 14,000 a day. And then um, again, being paid peanuts, I kind of came to them at some point and said, I, I, I need a pay rise. And they said, okay, do 18,000 words a day. So I did about 10 months there. Um, 10 months I, wow yeah. i was like yeah, imagine this is day exactly. three you were like i'm gonna quit <laughs> yeah. so i had i had a spreadsheet on on my work computer and i had gone on the internet and found out the the totals of the longest books in the world and then i passed all of those and i was doing the longest book series in the world and i think by the time that i passed game of thrones i just stopped counting <laughs> because it was too wow. much so um yeah huge mistake but i learned to write quickly and also what the work that I was doing there was sort of SEO stuff back when um, Google didn't really notice if you just put out 700 pages of this similar content. Content with links. farming, really. Content farming, exactly. You know, keyword stuffing, the whole business. 
but I'm really conscientious and so I actually tried to make the articles make sense and, and be good articles. <laughs> um, so yeah, I learned how to write the same thing, you know, maybe up to 50 different times, not using the same words, not um, making it a, a duplicate article, but actually finding a new and interesting way to say it, which was horrible to try and do, but what a skill that I learned at that point in my career. Yeah, Horrible then mistake, you can, me everything. If you then learn how to write a really good romance novel and can write that a really good romance novel with different words that's entirely different again and then again yeah. and again, and you can write 12,000 words in it, like bloody hell. Right. So at the minute, I write 5,000 words a day, and that's kind of like luxury for me. That's like leisurely. Yeah. It's like, let's go for a stroll. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, you know, five thousand words. I'm trying to think. I mean, I feel like every day, just writing emails and all the things mm -hmm. that I'm doing. Not even creative writing anymore. I'm writing thousands of words every day. But you know, it, I think it's not even the speed that you can type at, but it's you know, you know, the ideas and the formulating of of the plot, which is where plotting comes in. I think you know, it's much easier to write five thousand words or ten thousand words in a day if you have a good you know plot a good layout of what you're what you're doing where you're going and you don't have to waste time thinking to yourself okay what happens next and uh, you know is that going to work with this scene that happened over there you've got to plot all that out right yeah hmm. and it also saves you time on you know and I, when i did write novels at the beginning i would just kind of make it up as i went along but you know what always happens is you get to the end and you come up with a really good twist like, oh, I'm a genius. This is brilliant. Now I just have to go back and edit chapters two, three, six, yeah. seven, nineteen, and put all of the seeds in for this. Which right. you could have written them that way in the first place and saved yourself some time. Yeah, and I think that that's like one of the big things, and we've talked about that in the past with uh, with people when we talked about sort of plotter versus pantser and stuff. You know, especially for books that are you know, mysteries or thrillers or stuff like yeah. that, where you know you really do need a lot of setup and clues and seeds that have been planted and if you're sort of flying by the seat of your pants like there's going to be a lot of rewriting a lot of editing that has to go in to fix all that and that's just extra work i mean if you didn't plan it out but uh, and also like you know you say oh you come up to the end and you think of this great twisty ending but sometimes it's it's the opposite where you know if you don't have it all planned out you come to the end and you're like i don't know how to end this now and Maybe, i didn't yeah set up the right things i didn't you know i wrote myself into a corner here you know mm -hmm. and then you end up having to do some crazy marvel thing where it's oh but time travel in alternate realities and <laughs> so it doesn't really matter <laughs> you know like and nobody likes that kind of an ending right yeah. and <laughs> it even was all down a dream oh yeah it was all a dream <laughs> even down to chapter endings you know if you're doing a mystery thriller it's really important that you have those hooks at the end of each chapter right. to set up the mystery and if you don't know what the chapter outline is how can you do that right well, exactly yeah i mean even when i was writing romance i always tried to have sort of hooks at the end of all my chapters i, I always you know i used to read a lot of dan brown and his books you know he has very short chapters but each one is like you then you really got to read the next one because they're like potato every chapter yeah every chapter ends on some kind of a crazy <laughs> hook and so i really enjoyed that and those books i always i could never put them down and so when i was writing i was like i want to I want people to have that experience with my books. Even if I'm not writing a thriller, I want them to get to the end of the chapter and be like, well, now I have to read at least the first few lines of the next chapter. And then once they've done that, it's like, well, I might as well finish the chapter, but then yeah. you're caught in this endless loop, right? <laughs> um, okay, so, so go ahead. No, 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 I've forgotten what I was gonna say. <laughs> um, well, I was gonna say like, if for the authors that would wanna get into this, what's, how would they get started? Um, okay, so you can, if you just want to get some experience, you can start with places like Upwork or Fiverr, bearing in mind that the pay is going to be really low there um, because it's just people you know, looking for content farms or whatever. I am a member of an association called the Association of Ghostwriters. They have not paid me to say that, um, <laughs> but it's a really good group. So they actually have um, a Facebook group, which is for both professionals and amateurs or people who are trying to get into it. So there's a lot of advice being shared there. Um, and I'm sure there are other Facebook groups or groups on other social medias that you can join. I'm sure there's advice on places like Reddit as well. 
Um, but yeah, the big the big thing is getting that first client. And a lot of that is about confidence. So if you know you want to do nonfiction, for example, study a bit, make sure you actually know how to do it. And then maybe just go and find like a local business owner or something, you know, start pitching people. I can write you a book. It's going to do this, this and this for your business and see who bites. And if you present yourself with that confidence, then, you know, sometimes people don't even ask if you have any experience because they just believe you do. <laughs> yeah, they could say me. Exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, you say, you know, getting the first client is sort of the the hardest thing and and I agree and that's true for most things but it's actually I wonder with ghostwriting though if that's even enough sometimes because if you can't if you can't say that I had this client <laughs> then uh, then again people are going by your word you can say I've written five yeah. ghost uh, ghost books and they've done really well but I can't tell you anything more about them or show you or prove it in any way right so that's right, really yeah. the big issue it can be tricky. I think number one is once you've done one under your belt, you've, you're going to be a lot more confident and that's going to come across in the way you present yourself and people will believe you. And the other thing is, if you're already an author, then, um, you know, you've got your own books um, in terms of, you know, people sometimes ask for writing samples where you can just make one up. Just write yeah. a fake chapter of a fake book. Right. So, I mean, if you yeah, write but, uh, it yourself, then it's, 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 it's a proof of your ability. So, yeah, I mean, but, that's but how you write the, a book anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Right. Well, it is, but I mean, <laughs> you know, the the other thing though is, you know, from a from a customer perspective for fiction, you know, it's not just that the person can write, but can they put a story together? Can they create characters? Can they, you know, build tension? Can they do what authors need to do aside from just having a good grasp of the English language and able to put two words together, right? So yeah, you have to be able to do that. So you have samples of your writing on your on your website? I do, yeah. And I have also, I do have a small number of clients that have allowed me to to use their names. So, you know, I right. can point to them and I can point to my own books. But you have a hundred clients, right? So over time yeah. you've you've gotten a few. A few <laughs> Somebody who's right, starting, exactly. right? It's it's gonna be much harder to to get that going but um yeah so there's no um like how do customers find ghostwriters then so uh, the number one place that i get my leads from is linkedin um so i make a lot of content on linkedin about ghostwriting um and i get connected to you know business owners and people who might be interested in that kind of thing and surprisingly a good number of them will come to me and say Hey, I'm interested in, in in a book and I think, oh, great. OK, what's this going to be about? Maybe entrepreneurship or something. And they're like, oh, no, it's fiction. I'm like, right. OK, <laughs> um, you can get them also just from from your website. You know, people who know they want to write a book are going to go to their computer and type in something like entrepreneur ghostwriter and then they'll find you if your website's good enough. Um, and yeah, just social media and referrals you know a lot of my clients even if they're not going to say publicly that they've worked with me if one of their friends says you know, i'm thinking about writing a book then they can refer me on now um where did how at what point did you come up with the entirely justifiable audacity to be like that's going to cost you twenty thousand dollars forty thousand dollars yeah that took a long time to come actually i was undercharging for such a long time but it all clicked i think for me when i sort of realized I kind of I looked at my monthly expenses and how much I, I needed to earn and I'm thinking but I'm gonna have to work non-stop with no gaps and if, there, if there's a gap in clients then I'm screwed this isn't right and then I went back and I said okay how much do I need to earn per year let's then divide that by you know how many days I want to work or whatever and then figure out my hourly rate that way so that I'm earning enough. And then since then, I raise it every July and every January because I keep writing more books. That means I keep getting better at my job because I have more experience. So I can't stay at the same rate. I've got to keep raising it. Well, you're, my, listen, you're my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> that That is true. And it, and and obviously there's there's a lot of value in that and people see that. Um, but it's important for, for people to understand like you don't start at those numbers because, Absolutely. you know, you're not going to get the customers, if, especially if they if they don't know you. You have publishers coming to you saying write books. Like you're obviously well known now as a ghostwriter, so you can right. justify charging that. And you, as you said, you have some big name uh, clients, 
And they're obviously, they have an idea of how much a book that they, under their name earns, yeah. they know that if they pay you $60,000, that's going to be, they make that back. Right. right. Whereas most people don't make that. And so the, and you want to make more than that, obviously to make a profit. So, you know, they have to, um, you know, hire somebody cheaper or whatever. Uh, so when you're starting out, you're definitely not going to be charging that much money. But if you have people continuing to come back to you and all of a sudden people start knowing your name and, and seeking you out, then yeah, then you can start moving that up because you're going to get more successful people and they're going to be making more money. And so it's only fair that you're getting a fairer share of that. Mm, and I would say if you're, if you're starting out, I would say raise it every time you write a book because one book to two books you've doubled your experience so you <laughs> right have but you probably you probably don't double the rate though probably not double <laughs> but you should raise it for sure yeah um and three books that's still a huge percentage more experience right so at the beginning what I would you raising it what would you say is a as a sort of a start a, a reasonable starting rate for somebody who was just getting into this Honestly, I'd tell them to, to charge $20,000. I'd tell them to start where I am. Why not? <laughs> I did so many years earning peanuts. Honestly, don't waste your time. Just try. See what happens. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> but I think, you know, the reality is, though, like without any sort of experience and without any name recognition, and it's going to be hard for somebody to to get a client for for twenty that's willing to pay twenty thousand dollars if they don't know anything about the ghostwriter. So I like like you said, they can go on Upwork and Fiverr and find somebody to do it for I don't even know how much, but well yeah. Fiverr, not not five bucks. But no, um but, <laughs> yeah, what happened in the days when Fiverr meant it was five bucks. That's fine. Yeah. Um but <laughs> But yeah, I think that, uh, so, okay, 20,000 on a novella. So what's that a per, what are you charging per word then? Is that, do you charge per word? Well, no, yeah, I charge per hour of work, right? Oh, and per hour of work. It, yeah, I don't know how long it takes me to do most things, but you have to factor in. I think people make the mistake of saying per word and they forget, you know, you've got to meet the client. You've got to email them backwards and forwards. You've got to all of, all of the little bits and pieces that come along with it, even the plotting and the structure, that's not going into the word count. So, yeah, I, I used to charge per word, and I think per hour is a lot better now. It's more accurate to what I'm right. actually spending in the book. Yeah, I mean, and I guess as long as the as long as the clients aren't questioning that. I, I know that like it's it's one of the things that people have issues with, especially these days with um you know the whole trend of working from home and stuff like that is everyone's like you know they say they're working but are they really working and like if you're charging <laughs> per hour and you come back and you say hey look it took me 100 hours and then you give them the thing and then they're like well i think that this shouldn't have taken 100 hours but it, you know it's on your word right so it by charging on word count that's something that somebody could actually check they'd be like okay you mm -hmm. charge a dollar a word and it was 20,000 words. So it was $20,000 or whatever it is. Right. So I guess, again, that might come down to you as somebody who is established can say I'm charging per hour, but I wonder whether or not that's as easy for somebody else to do. See, I don't tell the client what I'm charging per hour. They get just, Oh, okay. They, okay. they get what the cost is for the whole project. And I obviously I have experience that I've done enough books now that I kind of know how long stuff takes me. If I get that estimate uh, wrong, that's that's on me, and I don't charge them more after the fact. You know, I've just oh, so, I mean, that's perfect it. for them. They have a they have an upfront expectation of what it's going to cost, right. and then based on what it, you it. calculated as your hourly rate, that seems. Br you know, for somebody who keeps saying she's not good at numbers, you do a lot of numbers and Excel spreadsheets and and yeah, planning these things out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also have OCD, so that probably helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so, okay, so that's that makes more sense now. So you're giving them a flat fee based mm -hmm. on your calculations, what you know about yourself, and then it's it's just whether or not they're going to decide to to accept it or not. So yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and then you know you talked a bit about your. Um, ability to write quickly and you've mm -hmm. developed a process over time uh so why don't you tell us a little bit about that okay yeah so it's pretty similar whether it's fiction or non-fiction um but it what it does we start with 
structure, as we mentioned before, it's the most important thing. So with fiction, it's quite straightforward. We'll just go through and we'll say, I'll kind of have one hour meeting with, with the client and say, okay, what is the, the thing that we're talking about here? And then I will pull out the main points from that. Those are our chapter headings. And I'll write down exactly what needs to be in each chapter, as well as the word count for each chapter, which is really important, especially when you're writing to a word count for a client. For fiction, I will go a little bit more in depth. So I will start out by identifying the five, six, seven, however many is key plot lines. Then those key plot lines need to be evenly spaced sort of amongst the chapters. So let's say if we're doing 25 chapters and we have five main points that we're going to be hitting, each of them needs to take roughly five chapters. So now I can actually go through and I will write a very detailed plot um which includes the character's motivations it includes um maybe what kind of cliffhanger we're going to have at the end of the chapter and it includes um well not it doesn't usually include a word count because in fiction generally we're going to keep each chapter the same length and then maybe one or two that are either shorter or longer for impact um so then when we have that structure i basically can sit down at my desk and do my five thousand words a day because all of the research has been done. I've already identified all the areas that needed research and done it. All of the structure is done. I know exactly what to write in each chapter. I don't even have to think about it. I just literally look at my notes and type. Um, and then depending on what the client wants, sometimes I edit as well, or sometimes I just deliver the raw document to them and they have a separate editor who then will tell me what they want me to edit. Um, but yeah, just like that. So I can do, you know, let's say if it's a 60,000 word, book why did I choose 60,000 it doesn't divide in a way that my brain could do 12 it that takes 12 days <laughs> 12 days to write um let's say two days for plotting and research that's 14 days uh, I'm going to add on five days for editing on my side so that's 19 days wow you are very organized it's quite I will take breaks between those days <laughs> so that, that's, that's so how it comes to a month <laughs> So, okay, so you usually tell them it'll take a month and... I usually spread it out a lot longer with my clients just simply okay. because if they're if they're hiring me and they need me to write it to a certain um, idea that they have, we're going to need to meet up. So they it's got to fit into their schedule as well as mine. Right, right. Um, and, so, and that's based on like your 5,000 words a day right. sort of number, right? Even though you can do 18 thousand so <laughs> um yeah i guess everyone has to sort of figure out what their level of writing is uh their mm -hmm. speed of writing right to the quality that they can write to and then that and then they can sort of use that formula to sort of plug in how long it'll take them to write the book i mean some people are a thousand to two thousand words a day and some people write ten thousand words a day right so um but in general, though, and I mean, advice that we often or uh, almost always give is you shouldn't be editing your own books, right? So right. are you, when you said like uh, some people will send it to another editor or you do the editing, when you say you do the editing, do you mean you actually are just editing it or you have an editor that you use? And if you're using an editor, are you including that cost? Um, yeah, so um, either or. I mean, if it's, if it's me, um... So let me let me explain this a bit further. So obviously, if I work with a publisher, they already have an editor that they use. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, that's someone that they know and trust already. So usually the process with them will be it goes off to the editor, then it comes back to me with suggestions of what they want changed. Then, um, I mean, I presume I don't ever ask. <laughs> I presume it goes off to a line editor at the end. Um, and then if it's a client that's um, just just hired me themselves, um usually i will do a lot of editing myself and then bring someone in just for the very last bit so i do a lot more of an in-depth edit in that case on my own just to get it to the best level it can be first to save them a little bit of money on the back end Good for you. and you're but are you hiring an editor yourself or um, and, yeah, and is that built into sometimes. the cost exactly yeah it is and we'll, we usually discuss that um at the beginning like sometimes i hire someone sometimes they hire someone um yeah whatever that, they want okay and you plug that into your spreadsheet formula right i do yeah like needs editor <laughs> find editor yeah yeah wow this must be a <laughs> crazy spreadsheet <laughs> it's, it's wonderful <laughs> That's, yeah i mean um 
oh i've forgotten what i was going to say now but i i um was in terms of like what does your working day look like mm. so i actually get up quite late i get up around 10 a.m um because i have clients in america as well as here in the uk um I, even i've got a client in singapore at the minute right so i have to be available for a slightly different range of time zones um you know get up ready to start my day around 12 o'clock i will start doing um what i call my daily habits so that's things like checking in on leads and following up with them seeing if there's any emails i need to deal with in the morning before i start my work doing some social media outreach stuff um boring stuff <laughs> after lunch i then will write five thousand words um which pretty much takes me up until dinner um watch a bit of tv with my husband and my son and chill out for a bit and then head back up around nine o'clock to work until 10 30 11 30. and that will just be kind of either catching up on the writing that i didn't quite finish if i'm if i've been distracted or doing more of the, the admin the, the research for an upcoming writing stint that i'm going to be doing just getting all my ducks in a row so how do you feel now compared to how you felt 12 years ago at your copywriting job i mean you've it seems like you've made a very sustainable life that you enjoy yeah Oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, I love what I do. Um, I can't believe I accepted that rate of pay for that many words. <laughs> <laughs> but when we're young, we never quite appreciate the value of what we provide, do we? No, I'm a lot less stressed these days. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people would think having to write 5,000 words a day would be stressful, but, but if that's what you love, right. then that's, yeah, I don't, it doesn't even feel like work. The work yeah. is things like doing taxes and sending invoices and that's all horrible stuff. The writing is, I still can't believe to this day that there is an actual real job where I can earn a living doing this stupid little hobby that just makes me happy. Oh, what a heartwarming <laughs> thing. to That is a heartwarming thing to say, because I think that's for a lot of us, that's the motivation, isn't it? It's like, you 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 have a passion for something you write even if you weren't getting paid for it so to get paid for it and get paid a really nice amount and be able to live a nice life is wonderful yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah i mean well you know what's that saying if you uh find a job you love you never work a day in your life exactly well, yeah they say that or, it's, uh, or if you find do, do something you love then you'll become completely obsessed with it and <laughs> make it yeah, it, sometimes it can ruin what you love right <laughs> Yeah. Oh, That's yes. For sure. Yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it seems like you have a very healthy balance in like your, your husband and your child and you 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 take mm. days off and you manage your your stress and your workload and stuff. That's very, very healthy. Yeah. yeah, my husband's a stay at home dad because I'm able to work enough to fund that. So that's really, really valuable to me is just having the people that I love around me all the time. And I can just go downstairs and see them like that's magical. So that's yes. Gosh. <laughs> I think that's what my wife likes to be. Yeah, that's what, that's what we all want, right? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, that about covers all the topics I think we were going to discuss, right? Like, I mean, you know, somebody who wants to be a ghostwriter, you know, we've sort of gone over those kind of steps. And then the idea of why you would hire one and how you would hire one is is the other thing. So, it, you know, for authors that are are thinking about this i think that this has been a, a really valuable uh discussion so For sure. absolutely oh thank you so rhiannon where can people find you online mm, i am at rhiannon de Verg on uh instagram on TikTok. um i was on twitter but of course that has not really <laughs> survived um <laughs> so i don't really post there anymore um and rhiannon de uk is my website that's wonderful. We'll pop a link down to that uh, down below in the things. Rihanna, this has been a wonderful conversation. Normally, I'd ask if Craig has any final questions, but I think you kind of like summed things up a second ago, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> but thank you so much. I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised at like what uh, a, a nice a, a nice gig you've created for yourself through your hard work and talent um but it could be very inspirational for a lot of people and i think it could be a big wake-up call to, to a lot of people listening so thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this thank you for having me all right and if you appreciated what rhiannon had to say make sure you give her some love by leaving a comment down below and while you're down there hit that like button if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet make sure you do that and we'll be back next week with another episode of fully booked so until then cheerio